watching Rogers TV. Welcome to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson, the personal finance show focused on moving you forward financially. And that is exactly what we're talking about today, moving you forward financially. We know these continue to be tough economic times for many Canadian households, including many here in Ontario. People continue to struggle financially, and with so much uncertainty, it appears that consumer confidence is waning. And that is the finding of a recent survey conducted by CPA Canada and BDO Debt Solutions. Joining me now to talk about the survey and share his thoughts on where our economy is going, but most importantly, share his advice on how you can better manage your finances. We have David Alexander Broussard, Chief Economist at the Chartered Professional Accountants of Canada. David, welcome to Money Matters and thank you for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Before we get into our sort of main discussion, can you share a little bit more about CPA Canada? Sure. So CPA Canada is the national organization representing the chartered professional accountants profession in Canada and internationally. So we have over 200,000 uh, accountant members. Uh, we do a whole lot of things uh, for our members, but also for the general public. In the case uh, of this uh, interview, we do a lot in financial literacy, where we give access to free resources on our website through our social media. Um, and of course, as I said, uh, there's a lot that we do for our members. And so there's resources that our viewers could maybe contact you with to, to get a little bit more information uh, as we sort of go through our discussion. Yes, uh, CPA Canada has a big uh, public interest uh, mandate. So we, the financial literacy stuff that we have is all free. That's amazing. So we're starting our discussion and we're going to talk about the findings of the CPA Canada and BDO survey. So we, we know Canadians have been under pressure financially since the Bank of Canada introduced record rate increases between March of 2022 and July of 2023, when the key lending increased from 0.25% all the way up to 5%. And so this survey is showing that about 48% of Canadians say that these increases in rates have negatively impacted their debt load, and 17% are saying that it has very negatively impacted their debt. And But here in Ontario, it's actually just slightly higher. 52% are saying that they've been negatively impacted, and 19% say it's a on a much higher level. Now, when we look at these results as well, it becomes clear that younger Canadians seem to be the ones that are struggling a little bit more as a result of these uh, rate hikes. Millennials especially, so 50% of those aged between 18 and 34 are struggling, and 58% of those between 35 and 54 years of age are having a difficult time. So David, when you hear these statistics and these demographics, it, are you surprised by any of this? Um, yes and no. Before doing the surveys, we knew that the interest rates hikes were not an issue for all Canadians. We wanted to put a number on that. So the the number that we have, as you said, the half um, is very is very important and very very interesting to have. Um, we also knew there were going to be geographic components and demographic components. Um, you alluded to one of them uh, with debt being more problematic in Ontario. Um, uh, the level of indebtedness of, of household is higher in British Columbia and Ontario because housing prices are, are more expensive. So this explains why they're a bit more crunched. Um, and you you referred to uh, the younger folks having a, a bit more of a challenge. Um, it's it's related to the life cycle elements. Um, generally, um, you, you buy your house uh, often when you're between 18 and 34, maybe slightly um, later now than before because of the prices. So you have a higher debt load. So this explains why uh, they're more concerned, of course, by the interest rate um, uh, increasing. Uh, and of course, as you get a bigger family, you need a bigger home. Um, so uh, this is why there are all the crunches on the 35 to 54. Um, 
So again, this explains why we've seen in the media, there's sort of a generational divide kind of occurring. Uh, that's one of the factors that could explain this. And that was going to, sort of going to be my my question for you was, you know, why why are these younger people having such a, a much harder time? And, and just like you mentioned, it's it's their stage of life that that they're in. And I'm included in that in that demographic. Now, with those who are more into the retirement ages, they seem to be doing a little bit better. They're still having a hard time. It looks like 39% of those 55 and older are still struggling. Any insights about that retirement demographic? Sure. Um, the retirement demographic is a bit more complex um, just because the, the profiles are very different. Um, so if essentially, if you're in the 40% richer uh, 55 and above, your house is generally paid off. Uh, you're relatively well set off for retirement. I, I saw some st studies from Statistics Canada saying that for the 40% 40, 40 richer, uh, they basically have no drop in, in income when they go to retirement. So those are not, uh, those would probably be uh, not impacted. And uh, also when you're at the very bottom of the range, um, most of what you get are, are federal benefits, um, whether that's CPP or that's um, the the other program uh, that escaped me uh, right now, uh, your those programs are indexed, so they're linked to inflation. So although there's a higher cost of living, they don't really lose uh, in the balance. And when you're in the poor, um, your your debt profile is a bit different. You usually don't have a house. Um, so I would say that those that are hit uh, are most likely in the middle. Uh, so not that well off still have a mortgage to pay. Uh, so I think that gives us an interesting insights of where that demographic lens. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that assessment myself, just with personal experience and what I see with uh, the clients that I speak to on a regular basis as well. So, I mean, obviously there's no doubt that the higher interest rates have taken its toll on the financial well-being of many Canadians. And David, you noted in the media release that the higher rates along with prolonged inflationary pressure could should, could suggest lasting damage to consumer confidence. Can you explain what you mean by that statement? Um, essentially, the, the interest rates increase that we've seen uh, brought us to levels unseen since early 2000s. Um, so even as the Bank of Canada implements interest rates cuts, which it did in June, which it most likely will uh, next week as well. The inflation number looks good enough and uh, the economies kind of need some air. Um, we could, once the fight against inflation is over, we could land anywhere between 2.5 to 3.5% uh, interest rates, which would be the neutral rate. Um, regardless whether we're at the top or at the bottom of that range, it remains higher than anything we've seen since 2008. Um, so therefore, all the mortgage that are going to be renewed um, will lead to uh, to household being worse off than they were before up until we go back to where we were at 3%. So we reached it first in September 2022. So all the mortgages that are getting renewed until that day um, will lead to, again, household in a worse financial position. So this brings impacts up until 2027 uh, on the mortgage side. And of course, uh, on the inflation side, um, Although we'll talk about it a bit later, I, I believe in the show, but although inflation seems to be under control, we still have to face those higher costs of living. Inflation doesn't go down uh, apart for a few months during a recession. So we're stuck with those higher price levels. So to me, those two factors combined explain why there's lasting damage to consumer confidence. And the next part of the survey sort of uh, gives maybe a little bit more insight into that as well, because 70% of Canadians are saying that this last rate cut in June um, really had little to no impact on their financial well-being. And that was about the same statistic here in Ontario. And then again, about 52% of Canadians believe that future rate cuts may not be enough to reduce that financial strain moving forward. And so it's a little concerning that our our debt has sort of risen to a point that in that an interest rate reduction has almost to no effect on our financial health. What are your sort of thoughts about this sentiment that Canadians are feeling? Um, 
I, I, I feel there's there's a lot of truth behind that sentiment, um, meaning that the financial situation is is a hard reality that people have to face. And even, as you said, small positive news of rate cuts uh, are not sufficient uh, to change the situation. Um, housing prices being what they are, the, le the, the level of indebtedness uh, the level of debt that households have is, is so high that, again, um, we need significant uh, changes on the interest rates uh, to have an impact. Uh, from a micro or an individual perspective, um, there's, of course, the, the, the obvious potential for bankruptcy, but more likely um, the debt en ends up taking all of the oxygen, leaving little to no room for discretionary spending, um, and even less for new possibility. For for example, if if debt repayment, uh, whether interest or capital, is taking out 30 to 40% of your net earnings, which is not unheard of in Canada, m might even be standards in the bigger city, um, it's hard to think about starting a business, uh, taking time off work to upskill or even retrain, uh, and investing in your future and in your kid's future, um, it might be put in the back seat. Um, so looking at it from a pragmatic perspective, there's a whole host uh, of there's also a whole host of psychological implications when you carry around a lot of debt. Um, and if you accumulate, accumulate all these micro decisions and implications, you can end up with a generation that carries around more debt uh, and for which uh, building wealth is more challenging. And when doing so, um, it tends to become more concentrated into housing uh, because of that initial debt load. You touched on this a little bit about sort of a, a, a little bit of a prediction about maybe how far these interest rates meet, need to come down. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit? What is, in order to sort of have to have Canadians feel just a little bit better or start to feel like they're making progress with their finances, what kind of a reduction in, in these interest rates do you think need to happen? Um, it needs to go down significantly if we want. And, and I'm even, even then, um, uh, I'm there's a bit of a catch 22 on the housing side. Um, we have very strong population growth, which is fueling housing demand and housing supply. On the other hand, has been good during the pandemic. We've managed to build quite a bit, but now with interest rates being higher, um, we're building less. Uh, so there's two elements to of answer to, to your questions. Uh, for household, it needs to co come down so that their, their payment can be more sustainable. Uh, again, uh, below 3% would be better for household. Uh, but also for uh, if we want housing pressures to alleviate, we need either to scale down population growth or build more. We we don't do as much on the population front as we probably could. So we need to build more. And that needs uh, the, uh, the construction sector essentially needs lower interest rates. Uh, as you know, construction and real estate rely heavily uh, on debt. So the more expensive that debt is, the more risk they have to accrue and the less they're going to build. So again, needs to go down for those two elements. Well, I appreciate that that little bit of insight as to what uh, what your feelings are as we move into the future. And, and as we sort of continue to talk about this survey, there's also some good news to share with our viewers when it comes out of this poll. And it's going to focus on our savings and our debt repayment. And we're going to talk about those findings when Money Matters returns after the break. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning. We all know it takes a team effort in any sport and with any challenge. You can be a part of the winning team that shuts out impaired driving. Whether you're out on the town or just hanging out with friends, drink responsibly. Always have a plan for a safe ride home for yourself, your family, and your friends. You'll be helping to shut out impaired driving. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. With Rogers TV, you can cheer on the home team from the comfort of your living room. We'll head to the rink, the field, the court, or the pitch so you don't have to. Tune in and cheer on your local amateur athletes on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson. My guest today is David Alexander Broussard, Chief Economist at the Chartered Professional Accountants of Canada. And we've been talking about the recent survey conducted by Liget, 
on behalf of CPA Canada and BDO Debt Solutions. And as concerning as some of the results are that are pertaining to the financial strain that high interest rates and inflation are having on Canadians, there is also some good news when it comes out of this survey. And so it is showing that many Canadians, including many here in Ontario, have made saving more and paying down debt their top financial goals. So according to the poll, more than a quarter of Canadians, about 28%, cite that increasing their savings and paying down their debt load is their top financial goal as interest rates maybe fluctuate. And these are followed by renewing a mortgage and then also making a home purchase. So David, this is obviously some good news. Um, how important do you think having these goals are when it comes to our sort of economic recovery? So the, the first step in reaching anything is having a goal or a target. Um, so uh, again, I agree with the statement that it's reassuring that uh, you say 28%, you, you put that together, you've got 56% of respondents that either want to increase saving or reduce debt, um, more than half of the people. So um, very, very interesting on that front. I wanted to highlight the, the age-related implications. Uh, we see the 18 to 34 being slightly more weighted towards uh, increasing savings, again, probably to access homeownership and 35 to 54 uh, focusing slightly more on paying debt. So there's um, it's in line again with their, their financial life cycle. Um, there's on that question, we have a I don't know category. We usually don't use that because it's not interesting, but in this case it is. I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Um, we, we as we move down across age brackets, we see less and less people with not knowing their financial goals. So it's 27 for 55 and above. 18 for 35 and 54, 12 for 18 and 34. So it would seem that financial hardship leads to having to make a decision um, and could lead to better financial planning. Um, my, one, my one sentence that I often use, uh, you no longer get accidentally wealthy in 2024 with uh, buying a house with one income and uh, having a strong pension plan. Uh, that's no longer the case. So probably leads to people um, being a tad bit more focused um, and it also means that, um, in my opinion, it's a bit more uh, individualized, meaning the responsibility of grow, uh, of getting better is, is slightly more on yourself. Um, the market's not going to drive you. Uh, and it, it, in terms of paying down debt or, or growing savings, it's, it always comes down to, to the same equation. How much can you space out your income from your saving? Um, and the more you can, uh, it, it uh, also, also leads to how much, how much of that margin can you use to pay down debt or growth uh, savings? So that was sort of interesting that there's a bit of a, a demographic difference uh, when it comes to who has the goal, uh, whether it's saving more. So that's the sort of the younger millennials, I'll say, and then paying off debt is maybe the older millennials. And just like you mentioned, it's that that's financial life cycle that we're, we're in at the time. And that makes complete sense. So having these, setting these goals, maybe is what I should say, it may seem a, a reactive uh, response to what's happening around us in the economy. But like you mentioned, it is, it's a positive thing to do because you have to have that goal in place to make those improvements. So do you have any advice for our viewers on different ways to achieve these goals as they move forward? Uh, so as it relates to the current context, um, number one concern, um, I mentioned that uh, inflation from an economy-wide perspective, the fight seems to be over, um, but it's not on the housing front. Um, housing costs are still increasing at 6% annually. Rent is at 9% right now. Um, so that housing choice that you're going to make is going to be very important. Uh, what we've seen over time, um, households tend to get smaller. We've got more people uh, living alone. Uh, so if you can pull your resources when it, when it comes to housing, uh, it's going to help. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do. Um, I think the current situation really highlighted um, how how important it is to have your wage grow at least on par with inflation um, like it hasn't been in the discussion as much uh, i believe uh since the 1980s so try to grow, grow your wage as much as inflation um because otherwise you don't maintain your purchasing power so 
you want to maintain your purchasing power and then talk about reducing spending because if your wage doesn't keep up with inflation by design you're reducing your spending without wanting to um so that's a concern there as well uh i would say going back to the housing front um when asking the bank for a mortgage subtract a significant amount from the limit that they're giving you um we've reached the top five uh in the world in housing on affordability and it's been done by following uh the advice of bankers so try to be wary of that um so those would be yeah those would be my quick insights but would you say sort of setting up those priorities first like whether it's going to be purchasing a home whether you're maybe thinking about your retirement plans would you say that putting those priorities in place first is is maybe a bit of a starting point and then with that that those goals in place would you recommend taking that initial plan to speak to a financial professional um if if need be, uh, if you feel overwhelmed, uh, knowledge is always power uh, whenever we think about financial literacy. Um, whether you gain it on yourself or, as you said, you go see a financial advisor, um, if you feel overwhelmed, the financial advisor might be a good a good, a good, good plan. Uh, if if you're working in a field that's kind of tangent to, to finances, um, there's more that you can do on yourself. But, of course, having that setting that plan um, and also setting it for, for yourself um, and without comparing yourself to others, um, in Canada currently, buying a house if you don't have kids um, might make little, uh, might make less sense in 2024. Um, because again, as I said, the size of the mortgage that you're going to carry, and and we've seen, um, as you know, when you renew your mortgage, you can put it back for, for 25 years. We already see a third of of mortgages being paid on over 30 years. So. Uh, if you want to carry that mortgage for 35 years, are you going to do so because you've got two or three kids or just as a couple without kids? So that's that's a concern there. But again, if you feel overwhelmed, go see a financial advisor. And, uh, you, you have to know uh, what you can do. Do you think there needs to be a change in the housing market side to have a, a, a more positive impact for the financial health of, of Canadians? Um. I would, I would, from the housing market side, um, maybe if we jump into the numbers, I think it's going to give some insights. Uh, the, the construction workforce has doubled in the last 30, 40 years. We build as much housing units as we did. Um, we, we had a slight uptick during the pandemic, 10, 15% peak from, from what we've seen in the 60s or 70s. So we really have an issue of how much housing units we're building. What are we building as well? Um, if, if we want more rental units, as we have, uh, when you have a strong immigration, uh, you, you want a lot of uh, rental units. Um, it, it's, it's, it, would be, it would be a hard sell for someone coming into the GTA, having to buy a $800,000 house when you've just arrived in Canada. So having those rental units kind of helps. Um, but there's, we need to upgrade the supply again, as I said, and maybe revise our, uh, home ownership is, uh, is everything that you need. Uh, as I said, again, um, if, if you don't have kids, um, think thoroughly about your, what you want to do, uh, because what we're, what I'm seeing in the numbers, what's happening in the larger cities, um, wealth is getting concentrated in housing uh more and more and that's happening across canada so and that's taking away money from your retirement so if so if you're thinking about retirement in your in, in your late 50s early 60s um mid 60s and you, you're a couple with two kids uh the house is going to be a, an hindrance to that um because again you you can't hate your house uh, it's not a liquid asset and you need to live somewhere yeah well there's no doubt that the last few years have been difficult uh, for Canadians, because of course we had the negative impact of the pandemic. We've had record inflation. We've had interest rate hikes. David, do you think we've learned any lessons over the last few years when it comes to managing our finances, maybe being a little bit better with our debt management? Any? Do you think we've we've learned anything? I think we're learning right now. Uh, the the era of cheap debt uh, has lasted a long time resulting in many people consumer household um have never seen high uh, higher interest rates uh, i would i would be in that category ever since i i, I came of uh, of adult age um so avoiding debt was less of an issue 
um, five, six, 10, even 15 years ago, um, uh, the interest payments were manageable. Um, so, and this is less the case. Uh, so I would say for, for larger items, whether that be a house or cars, those are mostly the larger loans. Uh, you should consider more uh, more thoughtfully than you did back in the days. For for higher interest debt, credit cards, it's always been bad. So this hasn't changed. Uh, when, when interest rates increase, there's a slight uptick in credit card interest rates. But if you're moving from 15 to 17%, uh, you're still getting killed at 15%. Uh, so um, as I said, uh, the, nine, the the war, the the war against inflation is very important with your wage. Um, and um, I think the um, what I, I alluded to earlier when in in terms of generational divide, uh, getting wealthier is a long game uh, in 2024. Um, so uh, get comfortable, have a plan, as you said, um, know as much as you can, get comfortable with uh, with being consistent and persevering because again, it's going to take Gonna take years to to pay your 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 house um, and uh, get your retirement savings. So stay in the get in the game young. Stay there for a long time. I actually thought of that when I was when we were looking over um, our conversation today, and and my thoughts were I completely agree with you about it, it is a long game. It is there isn't going to be sort of an immediate change that you're going to see, but putting that that financial plan in place for whatever your priorities are going to be, whether that's buying a home or education for your kids, retirement, whatever that looks like for you as a family. I think once you have that plan in place and you start to see yourself making the progress to, towards those positive changes, I think that is what keeps you motivated to keep going. You have that incentive. And so, David, I really appreciate everything that you've had to say. Do you have any final thoughts for our viewers today? Um, as I said, from a financial literacy standpoint, knowledge has always been power. It's, it's, it's still the key. Uh, we have a lot of tools, um, whether that's saving programs, again, as you said, for retirement, for your kids' education. Uh, they're there. Utilize them as much as you can. Um, and I mean, the the we live at a strange time where we're more centered on ourselves, but we compare ourselves more because of social media. Uh, I think avoiding the noise has never been more important. Um, don't compare yourself with the Jones. That's always been the case, but it's even truer now, I believe, because every time you open your phone, you, you see the Jones. Um, and, and again, um, I think also not listening to the negativity. Um, you said it, you have your plan, you make progress. That's good. Keep going. Um, to, to me, that's that, uh, those are the, the key things. Well, thank you so much. Can you share with our viewers the CPA website, just in case they want to have a look at the resources that are there? Sure. Um, the, the CPA website is simply cpacanada.ca. Uh, we deliver free financial literacy there. Thank you so much, David, for being here today and sharing your advice with our viewers. And I also want to thank you, our viewers, for watching. Until next time, I'm Shannon Jackson. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Summer days, summer.